World Cup is coming back to England after 20 years, and I think that is a, it's a, it's a huge positive. I, you know, I was lucky enough to be involved in the in the in the World Cup uh, 20 years ago here in 99. So it's a completely different world now, and I think over the course of the planning, we've set ourselves some really ambitious targets and ambitious goals, um, and that's been a good two three years in the making. So um, you know, we've we've certainly learnt a lot from tournaments and events that have been held in the UK, be that the Olympics or the Rugby World Cup. But also, we spent a lot of time at the Cricket World Cup in Australia and New Zealand, um, and we learnt a lot from them. But I think we've obviously got to take all of that learning and bring it to the UK. So we have, we've got some really ambitious goals and ambitious targets, but uh, I think there's going to be lots to look forward to and this is the start of it, it's a very exciting period. We're looking at creating one of the biggest ever and you know, as the world moves, whether it be broadcast or digitally or fan engagement and fan experience, the, the world moves on very quickly and I know we talk about the Cricket World Cup in Australia and New Zealand being in 2015. Now, that was three years ago. It felt like it was just yesterday. But the world has moved on incredibly since then. So I think everything we're doing about the ambition for this tournament is we're wanting to engage not only the UK population, but engage a global audience around the Cricket World Cup. We attracted a, a completely different audience to the Women's World Cup as we did to the Champions Trophy. But at the same time, the percentages of people who had come to either the Champions Trophy or the Women's World Cup for the first time was very high. They were, we're in the regions of the 50s and 60 percent. So that means we're attracting a new audience um, who are really interested in global tournaments. And I think the words World Cup really have a gravitas to them. And I think we'll see that. We definitely saw the difference between the Champions Trophy and the Women's World Cup um, and the way people engaged with the words and the tournament World Cup. So we're expecting that momentum to carry on through, which is, will be fantastic for, the, for 2019. The, the amount of planning that we've gone through over the last couple of years um, and you do it all in offices and you out in the, in, the, in the venues and you're speaking with the ICC and the ECB about all of these plans and then suddenly one day it arrives and it's here and you, you, you launch the schedule, you've got the ticket prices, we, we're just over a year away. Uh, Ticket registration will start on the 1st of May. Uh, volunteers are going live on the 3rd of May. So all of these things are starting to stack up very quickly. It's a hugely exciting period for the tournament. The beauty of the competition in the tournament is that it's, it's the round robin and all play all, which is, uh, is, is fantastic from a tournament point of view. Some of them that jump out, and obviously the very first one is, is England against South Africa at the Oval. The opening game on a Thursday evening uh, I think will be absolutely jam-packed. It'll be a fantastic, fantastic match to kick the tournament off. And then obviously you've got your big traditional head-to-heads with the, the Indias and the Pakistans, the England and Australias, um, some really big games. But then you've also got last year or the 2015 World Cup finalists obviously with round robin New Zealand playing Australia we welcome West Indies and Afghanistan uh, into the top 10 and they're playing in the World Cup that'll be incredible to see them playing in World Cups particularly Afghanistan so uh, I think there's going to be some great games of cricket around the country